Hi and welcome to this instruction video. If you found this video on YouTube and you haven't seen this before, this video refers to a project called OS Railway where the aim is to create a fully functional and fully 3D printed model railway system in O-scale. That means 32mm track width and a scale of 1 to 45. All models are published on Thingiverse where you can download all SDLs free of charge. Please check out the links in the description for more information. This video shows the printing and assembly process for the turnout for the OS railway system. There are two versions, one right hand and one left hand. Don't make the mistake of thinking you can mirror one of them because it also mirrors the track attachment. Start by printing the main body. If you are unsure of which material to use, I really suggest PLA. Every single part you see on all the prototypes in this system is printed in 100% PLA. You don't need to use support, however it is important that you make sure you have a good bonding to the build plate as during the first 2mm you will have 7 individual parts for the body alone on the print bed, and if any one of them come loose it will ruin your print. In my opinion there is no reason to use a finer layer height than 0.2mm. I use 0.2mm for probably 90% of my prints. If you want to all color as the one in the picture, you have two options. Either you can manually pulse the print and change the filament when you see that the printer starts to print the overhangs between the sleepers. This will occur at 2.2mm if you use 0.2mm layer height. If you use a different layer height, select preview in the slicer and check where the printer will start bridging the gaps between the sleepers. However, if you don't want to keep an eye on the printer at all times, there is another way. Prusa has a color change script on their webpage which lets you insert one or multiple color changes in the G-code at given heights. Keep in mind that for this to work you need to disable setup because the script searches for points where the selected height is passed in the G-code and if you have setup enabled this will occur several times for a given height and you'll have a nightmare when the printer tells you to change filament over and over again. I use Slicer Prusa Edition and in that you do this by changing the printer to color print in the drop down menu. The moving track pieces are the only parts that need support and they are printed upside down to make sure that the important surfaces come out clean enough. This ensures that the track edge on which the wheels roll end up at the right height and that the track can move smoothly. When you have printed the remaining parts it's time for assembly. Start by removing the supports from the moving track parts. You might need to sand away a few leftovers from the support. However, if you printed the parts as shown in the previous picture, the rough surfaces created by the support are not critical for the function of the parts. The sliding lever that moves the track parts will most likely not fit at first, and you will need to sand the edges to make it slide nice and easy. It doesn't have to slide super smooth, as a bit of resistance can be good to keep it in position. Make sure the underside of the track overhangs are clean enough, you might need to remove some filament strings or material pieces blocking the path. Insert the moving track parts. Look carefully which one goes where, as it's easy to place them wrong as you can see I almost do in the video. You should have to push quite hard to get them in place. If you find that they are too loose, you might want to either print them again and scale them up by half a percent, or you can try adding a bit of tape to the inserts to make them sit tight. Insert the lever and attach the cover. The cover can be glued using super glue, also called Sione Acrylate. Congratulations, you now have working turnout. Thanks for watching and don't hesitate to leave a comment if you have any questions.